Thank you. First, I'd like to thank Chair Stins for asking for the report and to the CEO, Chief Customer Officer, and the CFO for the report that he presented and the opportunity to depute on it. I recommend support of the staff report with a friendly amendment for your consideration after you've queried staff on their assumptions. I believe a two-hour time-based transfer would be the most significant team seat fare innovation since the original adult Metro Pass launch in 1980. And let me explain why. First, we'll make the TTC significantly cheaper and more convenient for all trips, not just those downtown. By extending the benefit of Metro Pass's multiple on-off boardings to the 50% of TTC riders who don't use a Metro Pass, especially those of low income, such as students and seniors who cannot afford a monthly pass, youth unemployment was recently, youth unemployment amongst the 15 to 24 year old cohort has skyrocketed from 11% in Toronto in 2008 to 21% today, supposedly after the 2008-2010 recession has ended, as youth are shut out of first jobs by companies still reluctant to hire new staff. Secondly, the fare makes the TTC significantly cheaper and more convenient for non-users and light TTC users who don't take transit sufficiently frequently to justify the high trip multiple or cost of a monthly pass. These new riders will add incremental rides and revenue to the system, particularly off-peak where the TTC has spare capacity, just as previous fare innovations have, partially offsetting staff's estimated $20 million revenue loss which, to put it in perspective, can be recovered just by a five-cent fare increase if you decide to do it. Third, it will sync the TDC's transfer policy with virtually all other GTA public transit properties, allowing much simpler Presto card programming, as the report says. This will enable an affordable single GTA fare with two-hour transfers by finally eliminating the 100% GTA fare penalty across the arbitrary 905 boundary. It devastates GTA public transit travel with 905 public transit systems having single digit total shares versus 23.5% for the TTC in 2006. It also impoverishes the 905 public transit systems. For example, York Region has a uh, sub 50% RC ratio cost recovery and a 450 per ride subsidy, with the TTC's figures being approximately 75% and a 79% ride subsidy. I estimated using some really old TTC statistics that have to be updated that the incremental GTA public transit revenue gain with the GTA two hour transfer could be in the order of $300 million for all transit properties in Toronto with further significant GTA public transit operating cost savings by rationalizing the duplicated TTC fare and the 905 public transit non-fare service within the Toronto property. You know, the 905 properties cannot pick up Toronto fares in, in the Toronto region. The TTC could have, reallocate bus service to other high demand routes without increasing operating costs. It will also increase the 905 public transit's modal share into double digits, great for reducing their operating losses, with the GTA public transit modal split possibly increasing by the order of magnitude of 5 percentage points. Those are my reasons for supporting the two, two hour time based transfer. Um, However, to fulfill your oversight role, I recommend asking staff what was the basis for the $20 million lost revenue estimate? What was the St. Clair experience? There's no mention of St. Clair in the report, which is supposed to be the test bed to further refine both revenue and ridership effects, which we don't know. Specifically, what was the new trial incremental rise revenue assumptions from the St. Clair test that TDC staff incorporated into the $20 million revenue loss? Historically, TTC staff saw fare proposals as opportunities to secure more operating subsidy, saying it costs us a dollar a ride subsidy, so if we carry more riders, we need a dollar subsidy for each rider we, we, we carry over budget. In fact, with a fixed annual service plan that doesn't increase as more rides are carried, each incremental ride adds incremental revenue surpluses at no additional cost, while ride shortfalls uh, versus budget adds to the revenue deficit. You can see that in this month's CEO report where the rides resulted in the, the, the ride deficit resulted in the revenue uh, deficit as well. It was offset by the cost savings. I'd recommend the TTC Commission propose a friendly amendment directing TTC staff to reopen the 2009 negotiations 
with Metrolink's test GTA service and pair integration, one of their core mandates in advance of the 2005 rollout, 2015 rollout, with a Presto card and a two hour transfer just in time for the Pan Am Games. Oh, yeah, just the last paragraph. It's an ideal opportunity and a low risk test to quantify the GTA 1 fare operating cost and revenue impacts for a possible future rollout of a GTA 1 fare two hour transfer once the Presto card reaches 100% availability. Thank you for your attention and consideration to our Thank you. Any questions in the audience? No? Thank you very much.